Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker. That's me. And we are in the deceased. This is yeah. the 2023 <laughs> <Okay. laughs> long departed uh, because production has stopped on this vehicle, much like your Jeep that we're looking at out here. This is the 2023 Dodge Charger SRT Super B Special Edition. A big American sedan that today we're going to see how fit, how it fits our family of three. Stay tuned. All right, Holly. Uh, might grist you out in the intro a little bit, but yes, this car is no longer being produced, but we get to spend some time with it. Uh, say our goodbyes to this platform. Uh, the Hemi V8 under the hood, which sounds so good. You've gotten to spend four days in this vehicle completely without me. Mm -hmm. You've spent more time in this and will spend in our time with it, more time with it. Why don't we start outside, work our way inside like we normally do, and then we'll sure. talk driving impressions. What are your thoughts of the Super B? Well, it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I really like this blue. It's like a, is is this considered a muscle car? No. Yes. Oh, it is. Okay, it's that's how it feels. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and how it sounds too, right? How it sounds. <laughs> this does have some things in it to that muscle car end, like line lock. Do you know what line lock is? Mm -mm. That basically locks the front brakes so that you can burn out with the rear tires and warm them up. <laughs> For launch control, do you know what launch control is? No. It tells the computer to do all the things to make it go zero to 60 the quickest. Oh my goodness, this thing can't scoot! Woo! Sounds like things you don't need to know in a family car. <laughs> yep. Uh, care to know how fast it goes, zero to 60? All conditions perfect, which we do not have. No. Uh, four and a half seconds. Mm, four and a half. Yeah, wow. four and a half. And all kinds of different race options in this, drive modes, all, all that fun stuff in this one. But yeah, line lock is ready if you wanted to, yeah. No, nope. burn out. Not warm here. Up those returns. Not um, here in the rainy weather. Underneath that big hood, we have a 485 horsepower, naturally aspirated 6.4 liter V8. Sounds good, too, doesn't it? Yeah. Been I mean, it? it's loud. <laughs> no, I've not been revving it, but there's it's just turning it on. Yeah. There's a Roar noise, a sound. So some of the special things on the outside of this Super B, we've got the Super B decal on the hood. Did you mm -hmm. notice it? Of course. Yeah. And I like it. Yeah. And I actually don't hate this color, even yeah. though it's, blue. it's not my favorite shade of blue. Yeah. But um, what are the rope things on the... Because yeah. that's interesting. I'm not sure I love that detail. It kind of looks like the hood fell off in you. Well... The, it's to keep the hood from falling off. That is a race feature that you see in race cars. Okay. Those are hood pins. Uh, okay. to where if the latch failed, the hood's not going to fly up in your face. Oh. So just an additional step when popping the hood open. Oh, is that something we should be afraid of no. happening without no. those? Okay. No. It's just a race feature. And then we've got that nostril and the heat extractors on the hood. Mm -hmm. That black wing back there. Yeah, it's nice. A lot of very muscular looking touches on this. Nice. The black wheels, big red brake mm -hmm. calipers, all very strong, muscular things. Muscular. What are your thoughts moving to the inside? Um, it looks like a muscle car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the gauges, our real gauges. Yes. Um, the I like the, um, what do you call it? This design carbon up fiber. here, the carbon fiber. Not just a design, but a material. But a material, yes, um, up here in the front. So I really like the design on the inside. I think it's um, it's simple. Yeah. We've got but another I, Dodge Charger right there around us. Yep. Um, and then the interface is the same as the Jeep. So yeah. the, the 
buttons on the steering wheel and finding things on the interface are very, very easy for yep. me. <laughs> I mean, all the same switch gear everywhere from mm -hmm. your 2014 Jeep. Mm -hmm. Same panel here on the door, same panel right here. Although yep. we don't have launch control and drive modes in your Jeep. Same panel on your door. Have you noticed some of the B Easter eggs in this one? Uh, Besides the one on our seats. Yeah. I guess not. You've got a honeycomb pattern underneath your uh, speed on that center screen. Mm -hmm. Honeycomb pattern in both of the gauges. Mm -hmm. Just little Cute. touches. Little touches. Little touches. Little touches. Um, honeycomb pattern here. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thoughts on storage in this big sedan? Uh, so there's some things that are confusing, like this. I think they don't want you to put the key there. The key? Yeah. Okay. Um, this little space, which would be good for your cell phone if it fit your cell phone. Yeah, and you have but a, it doesn't. just an iPhone a smaller 13, one. so yeah. it should fit, but it doesn't. It Showing the age of this vehicle. Uh, Phones were smaller back then. <laughs> I do like the... See. Does it, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, it just sort yeah, of. <laughs> sort of. Again, showing the age of this. Not one. enough that you would want to do that. Want to do that. Yeah. Uh, but then you have the cup holders. Now That's this little grippers. So I like this. This is okay. Storage is kind of shallow, but mm -hmm. then you have the little shelf. I like the shelf. Okay. Um. So I mean, all in all, it's okay. The, Dual layer glove box. Yeah, that is that's nice. Damped and felt lined. The door. Storage storage on the door is separated for a cup holder and a mm -hmm. regular, and it is easy to reach, so you wouldn't have to worry about not being able to reach something that yep. you put down there. That's nice. Tucker, how's the space back there in the back seat? Good. Yeah? You got plenty of leg room? Yep. Yep. I guess now would be a good and time to talk about child seat installation, and because you had this for four days without me... Do I get to talk about it? You got to put it in. <laughs> Before we cut to me actually doing it for the camera, any thoughts? Yes, it was terrible. <laughs> uh, to be fair, putting in um, a car seat in any car is already a terrible yeah. chore. Um, but in here, I do like that there are three hooks in the back, mm -hmm. so you could put the car seat in any seat. Um, and that's where my <laughs> like of putting the car seat in ends. Yeah. Um, but it's just uh, part of it's being a new car too, but um, the seats were so close together, it was hard to get them latched in the back. But so, not to spoil everything, I broke three fingernails, not and it was freezing cold, it was a terrible experience. So, not to spoil everything, let's go ahead and cut to me attempting <laughs> to put Tucker's child safety seat in. Bonk. So there are multiple reasons why big sedans like this are going away. One of them I just demonstrated for you here. Another I'm about to with the installation of a child safety seat. I absolutely see why SUVs for families with kids in car seats are so popular. The installation process. But to do all this, let's get Tucker's Graco Extend-A-Fit child safety seat. This is the same one he rode in when he was rearward facing. We're gonna go ahead and put it in its rear facing format just to see what it looks like for front facing comfort. Yeah, we're gonna need to move that passenger seat up just a smidge, but I don't think it's gonna to cut too much into overall comfort up front here as we get this one into place. There we go. So that is uh, his a child seat in its forward facing configuration. Still gives me plenty of room up front because this is a big American sedan, but it's not as comfortable as, well, a big comfortable American SUV like the Wagoneer or Grand Wagoneer that Stellantis offers. But now we can go ahead and turn this guy around, put it in its forward facing format and talk a little bit further about ease of installation. This does have top tethers all the way across the back. It has lower anchors all the way across the back. So in theory, this big, large American sedan, if you've got narrow enough car seats, could fit three across using all the designed hardware on the child seat itself. So that's a plus, but trying to uh, get these in is another process altogether. These top tethers go over top of the headrests and are squishing the headrests and make installation 
uh, a little tough compared to an SUV that you can just go around to the back of the seat on. So that's nice and snug there. The lower latch points down here are in between the seat bottom and the seat back. You kind of have to poke around for them, but when you do, get that satisfying click. And like I said, we do have them all the way across in all three positions back here. Let's see, can I find it? There it is. Now, can we find it with the actual latch itself? Nope. Try again. Come on. Where are you? You're down there somewhere. There we go. Now we got that in. Let's go ahead, tighten this down. There is plenty of room in here. And since it's a car, it's down low. So I can really tighten this down and get it in nice and snug. With the car seat up front like this, Tucker's got plenty of room, but you've seen how he's been riding this entire video. So ease of installation for a big sedan, it's actually not that bad. And I really like that there are three latches all the way across. Really makes for a plus here. I'd give it a solid B plus uh, for ease of installation. Now let's talk a little bit about that storage back in the trunk. Trunk space in the charger. Well, we have a power opening trunk, hidden button right there, and it opens up nice and wide. Big American sedans are good for large trunk space. And while this does not rival anything from the 80s, I still remember my grandparents Caprice Classic. This is a very big trunk for this segment. You can see we've got hinges that will not crush, crush your luggage or anything that you've got stored back here, which is a very nice touch and it is very easy to get into. You can see we've got a lot of stuff in here already, but we do have this underfloor storage as well. And it gives you even more storage. And yes, for weight distribution, this is actually where the battery resides. You can see there's also a hook on this that I could clip up here. So I have complete access uh, to that underfloor storage, which is a nice touch. And on a gross day like today, handles up here actually make it very easy to, if you give it enough momentum, close the trunk without actually touching the trunk. Very nice. Now I'm cold, let's get back inside. Okay, so trunk, huge trunk. Yeah, huge trunk. Um, you can and in store fact, tons of stuff. Yeah, in fact, um, Tucker went and stayed with the grandparents, mm -hmm. and we had suitcase, bluey house, dinosaurs, we had everything you could think yeah. of. And they all fit back there. We came back with more than we left with. Oh, wow, okay. Because we then we had snacks coming home with us. Oh, boy. Yes, cookies so. that I've been snacking on. So we, we had plenty of room for that back there. And in a little while, we're going to go get groceries. Yeah. Uh, we're not filming that one, though, because it's cold and wet, and I don't want to get out again. But I have my heated and ventilated seat with the heat turned on right now. Yeah. Uh, suede and leather. So that's so, nice. And that's nice. Yeah. And very nicely bolstered, too. Mm -hmm. If I were doing racing things, these if would you be were doing racing things. fun seats to have. Which you shouldn't do. Right especially not in this nasty, nasty weather. Not in the nasty weather. Yeah, but uh, I see what is outside temp, 46 degrees. Now, as we are turning on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas, I guess we could talk about ride comfort, uh, quality, and your driving impressions, starting with Tucker's wobbly head. Tucker, how's your head back there? Not wobbly. Not wobbly? <laughs> I thought he was asleep there yeah. for a minute. Holly, what, what are your thoughts? Um, is this considered a race car, sports car? Sport tune suspension, muscle car. Muscle car. Um, for a muscle car, it's not that bad. Yep. Um, the, on some of the bigger bumps, you feel it, but um, for the most part, I mean, we're driving on the brick streets and it's pretty smooth. Yeah. It's Very just the bumps where you can really notice. So for a, an American muscle car, this really good. We're about to go over decommissioned railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Easy yeah. peasy. Uh, I will note though, you and I have both done it. She rides a little low up front. She's uh, low. scraped her chin a few times, even just in normal driving a situations. normal, yeah, a normal street, not even a crazy street. I mean, it's near impossible getting up our 13 degree driveway, but it can be done. But yeah, certain just drainage ditches and stuff like that going through them the way the mm -hmm. road tips. Um, difficult not to 
do a little chin music in this one. Uh, how is the steering wheel? The steering wheel is nice. Yeah? Uh, it's nice and thick. Yep. Dodge is good about so, thick wrapped. A little yeah, bit of squish like to it. A little bit of squish. Perforated some perforated leather. edges. Yep. Heated. And it's soft. Yep. It's heated. It's nice. I will say, we didn't talk about the um, seats being heated and ventilated. I did. You did? Mm -hmm. Before I was we turned on the brick streets. Oh, I wasn't listening to you. Um, so the seats are heated and ventilated, <laughs> but they work really well. Yes, the they heats. Do. I mean, I've. It's been point. freezing here in Texas, like in the teens. Yeah. And um, first of all, I like the suede. texture. Yeah, the suede because when you sit on it, it's not freezing cold already. Um, but then. I've turned on the heat and only had it on for a couple of minutes before I'm like, this is too hot. Which you had to do all through the touchscreen, which isn't great. Just like your Jeep, you can't do it while you're backing up because it's all can't rear camera. It. But There's no physical buttons for it. That's, that is true. And, and normally, normal, normally our complaint because, um, but because this is the same interface as my Jeep, I haven't had any problems. And also when you are starting the car, the buttons are there on the very yeah, front at the home screen. So, so yeah. otherwise, not as good as a regular button, but yeah. still. Otherwise good, uh, calm, comfortable. What's it been like driving 485 yeah. horsepower around without me? Um, I felt very cool. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, so I did take it on a little bit of a longer trip. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the bolstered seats. Yes. I like the suede of the seats. Yes. But the seat seats <laughs> are rather firm. Yeah. <laughs> I've got two person or two way lumbar here. You've got two person mm -hmm. memory over there. All the same controls, lumbar. Yeah. yeah. But lumbar. They are, yeah. They're on the firm side. Powered seats, um, but they are on the firm side. So I will say that my trip that was about 45 minutes away, I was feeling it. At yeah. the 45 minutes both ways, yep. I was feeling it a little bit. I am also old and my sciatic nerve oh, please. Uh, acts up every once in a while, so that doesn't help. Mm. Okay. okay. <laughs> if you're younger and have <laughs> less, full of you, life. Yeah, you're youthful what and full you of your body us? hasn't started falling My apart, goodness. it may be fine, but for me... <laughs> so, to that end, we can't talk uh, fuel economy here. 16.3 uh, uh, is what you've been getting, and that is with e. two-ish hours most highway driving going Yikes. to and from your parents' house. So, she thirsty, 6.4 liter V8. Yeah. Any other thoughts before we get to the window sticker and talk EPA numbers and price? Um, I don't think so. Okay. It's been fun driving. Uh, I would imagine so. I'm jealous I haven't gotten more time with it. <laughs> All right. EPA estimated fuel economy, 15 city, 24 highway, 18 combined. Oh, there is that. Yikes. Oh, I did remember some things. There's not a back window uh, wiper. Which there typically aren't in cars. There typically aren't in cars, but with this window being so slanted, the water really stays on it. Yep. So, and then on top of that, um, the visibility okay. is not great. Yeah, we've um, got teeny tiny little mirrors over here. Teeny tiny mirrors over here. Um, the hood is so big mm. up front and there aren't front, um, cameras. cameras. So like in our driveway, that's very steep. You're basically navigating blind yep. down it. Or up um, it. <laughs> you're trying to aim it. So, um, then the, and then the video, the backup camera is not the best. So those are so those are some things just to consider. And then trying to get this thing up our 13 degree incline driveway, 90 degree turn into a single bay garage the door. Turn radius is. Yeah. I mean, full lock. It's a pretty good turn radius. You could do it on a yeah. one way each way street, but yeah. But yeah, so like it fits in our garage, but 
she tight. Is it that is it that convenient yeah. that you, if you have to like do 13 turns before you get in? I don't know. All right, window sticker. What do you think? Uh, I know it's probably not in the 30s because I said I hope it's in the 30s and you said it. I mean, this platform did start in the 30s. I'm gonna say 43. No. Way higher. This model doesn't mm -hmm. even start in the 43 um, range. 55? No. Higher than that? Yeah. 62? Yeah, 63,985 oh. for this 2023 model. It's the engine, huh? Yeah. Starts at 50,330. We've got some options like the carbon fiber and the suede seats. And uh, the Super B Special Edition is 5,495. So, yeah, adds up quick. What do you need a Super B edition for? Because it's cool and special and an addition. And with this model going away, could uh, be something worth having 20, so, 30 years down the road. So with it going away, are people buying them up? Yeah, I mean, they did a last call model and all that fun stuff. So, Fun. Yep. Well, if you want to see more from Holly, see what she's driving, see her thoughts on things, go find her on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find us at all things GT Garage Talk, at GT Garage Talk, Facebook, Instagram, X, uh, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk, or go to gtgaragetalk.com. But it's raining a lot. We're in a rear drive supercar, muscle car, not supercar, muscle car, car. Uh, with summer tires and 47 degree downpours. So we're gonna get back home. Until next time, gearheads. Bye. Is that a charger? <laughs> well, there's good. no charger in this charger. No charger in this short. Is there a back windshield wiper? Okay. Is this in the $30,000 range? It better be. They start in the $30,000 range. Better be. And now we can see exactly what a launch control does in this wet weather. Oh my goodness, this thing.